You can't see it, but every home wastes energy. Some more than others. But how your home uses energy doesn't have to be a mystery. We're hot on the trail of wasted power. With the help of an energy detective, we'll see how this home uses energy. We'll also take a look at what causes eye stamps and how you can stop them from happening. And sometimes the crawl space beneath your house can be home to more than just wasted energy. Did you know the average home wastes 25 to 30 percent more energy than an efficient one? In fact, there are many ways your home wastes energy that you might not even know about. You should first think of your home working together as one piece. How does your heating and cooling equipment affect other parts of the home? Is your insulation doing the job? Do your walls leak air? Most homes can get a little drafty with leaks around windows, doors, and plumbing pipes. Even forgetting to close a fireplace damper will make your home leak energy. Plugging up these areas can save you up to 30% on your energy costs per year. Making sure there's enough insulation in the places you need it are important to keeping your home comfortable. Proper insulation in the attic, basement, and inside your walls are key in the right places. Sometimes just learning where you're using the most energy is helpful, such as how you're using your appliances to how many lights are LEDs versus incandescent. You can walk around your house and figure out how your home is using energy yourself. Or you can get some help. Meet Robert Runchy. He's what you might call an energy detective. He's been investigating how homes use energy for 10 years. He finds problems and suggests solutions. Hi, Bob. How are you? Hi, Pete. Hi, Megan. Hi there. Good morning. Bob, tell us a little bit about what you do. Well, we're energy consultants, so we're primarily designed to look at the structure on the building envelope. We look for air leakage, uh, which can drive up energy costs. Uh, we also look at the mechanicals in the house, the air conditioning, the furnace, the water heater. We check for fuel efficiency of those. And we, and we do some analysis of some airflow inside the house. And this is the house that you're going to assess? It is. What can you tell us about it? Well, a house built in the late 70s. Um, it appears to be a modular home, very popular in this neighborhood, uh, well built. Uh, and fairly comfortable, but does come with a couple of quirks. And what's the first thing you do to get started? We're going to start with the blower door test first because it's a little chilly out this morning and we'll get some great infrared pictures. Good. I'm going to let you guys take care of that. I want to go check in with the homeowner. Great. Hi, Kelsey. Hi, Megan. So Pete and I just met up with Bob. He's outside getting ready for the assessment. Tell us why you call him. I called him for some comfort issues in the house. A couple rooms are colder than the others and just wanted to see if he had any ideas of how we could fix it. Hmm. What all have you noticed going on with your clues? We got moisture in the windows, mold and mildew in the attic, in the crawl space, um, creatures in the crawl space, not sure what kind of damage they've done to interior insulation that we can't see. You know, the air conditioner and heater are running more frequently than we would think that they should be for the size of house. Yeah, you've got a lot going on. Yeah. What is the age of the house? It was built in 79, so about 30 some years. All right, and have, have you done any insulating at all? We have not, and we don't know that there has been any done. What kind of things have you done to the house? You've made some improvements. Yeah, we've done some, uh, we just recently did siding. We did a roof last year that is still having some ice dam problems and we had that before and so we thought maybe it was a bad roof, but now we're thinking that maybe it's other issues with insulation and stuff in the house. And then we've done some windows all the way around. Oh, that's a lot of good work. We'll see what Bob finds out. All right. You know, many utility companies offer services to help you find these trouble spots. Just give them a call and ask for a home energy assessment or audit. Here's something you may not know. According to the Department of Energy, 30 to 40 percent of air traveling through ductwork leaks, which accounts for a lot of energy loss. You can combat this by sealing ductwork with mastic, a paste-like substance that seals joints. Here's something you may not know. A house that leaks a lot of air loses energy quickly, but it also contributes to poor indoor air quality. It can also increase the chances of moisture problems affecting the home's sturdiness as well as the occupant's health.
Bob, we just finished putting the blower door in place. Explain what this does. Blower door assembly primarily measures air leakage and it gives us a unit of measurement, tells us how leaky or how tight a house might be. It's also measuring pressure on the house too, so we can tell whether or not there's negative or positive pressure on the house. Why is it important to find those air leaks? If there are big holes in, in the house or the building envelope, it can be a comfort problem. It can allow rodents in the house and can really drive up your energy costs. Now, when you fire this up, you have some expectations or things you, that you're looking for from this blower door test? Correct, yes. Yeah. So house built in the 70s like this one, we would anticipate to be somewhere around 1500 CFM. It's just a number that tells us how much air this is actually pulling out. Okay. So it's measuring all the leaks in the house as one big leak, and it gives us that one number. Where are areas that you say, you know, kind of target, you know, there are the, the, the usual suspects? So the low hanging fruit are chimney chases, soil stacks, electrical penetrations, bath fans. These can be big, large holes open to the attic, which is going to be a big energy waster. Is there a better time of the year to do a blower door test for a, for a consumer? Not really. Um, you can, we do these all year round. Um, the only thing that we look for is a difference in outside temperature to inside temperature of at least 5 to 10 degrees so we can get good infrared pictures from our uh, camera. What are you going to be looking for when you turn this on? So a couple different ways we look for air leaks. The infrared camera sort of pinpoints us to where the leak is. Um, we use the smoke pencil primarily around windows and doors, so that's where most of the drafts are in people's homes. Okay, and from the blower door test, then you're, you're able to put, for the homeowner here, you'll put together a report that really zeroes in on where the air leak is. Correct. They get a full 15-page comprehensive report with infrared scans, digital photographs of exactly what's leaking and where and how it gets fixed. Can we, can we fire sure, it up and take bet. a look? you bet. The Department of Energy says homeowners can do their own version of a blower door test by shutting all the doors and windows at a home and turning on all the vents. Homeowners can then walk around and feel for air leaks around doors and windows with their hands. All right, Bob, with the blower door test so far, what are you finding? Well, um, we're looking at the windows and doors um, with the blower door running, and we're looking for air leaks. So far, um, the windows look pretty good. Um, they've all been recently replaced. There was some question about this particular window and the one opposite on the other side of the patio door. And this is a, a, an original fixed window, so it doesn't open and close. So these historically are pretty tight. As I run my smoke pencil along the bottom of this window, you can see how the smoke just kind of lingers. It doesn't really go anywhere. There are really no air leaks in this window whatsoever. And if there was, you'd see that smoke. Yes, you'd see it move. Yeah. So, so that, that tells you that there's not uh, leak, leakage this here. This window is not leaking. So the concern is if you look at the bottom, there's like a staining yeah. along the bottom. So there's a fair amount of moisture that builds up on the base of this particular window. Um, so, you know, there are often misconceptions with windows. Oftentimes when they install brand new windows, the moisture on the windows is worse because the house is tighter. So there's less places for moisture to get out. You want to control moisture in the house by uh, having enough ventilation power to remove it as fast as it gets created. At that point, we rely on indoor ventilation, bath fans, kitchen range hoods, and so on. Okay, so this is a ventilation issue. As you look around initially with the blower door test, any other things that pop right now for you? The kitchen range hood currently does not vent to the outside. Um, this does have a gas burner on its stove. It does emit carbon monoxide. So. Um, we're going to recommend that this be vented outside to help control some of the uh, some of the CO and then also the moisture in the house. A home under construction is the easiest to prevent air leaks because you can build the home airtight and then introduce an air exchanger to circulate the air. An existing home is a little harder. You won't be able to stop all the air leaks, but you should be able to reduce them by about 20 to 30 percent. All right, Bob, what are you seeing with the thermal imaging gun? We're looking for primarily air leakage and insulation deficiencies. So right off the bat, I can tell you, the blue color in my camera indicates colder temperatures. It's about 55, 60 degrees outside right now. And then the warmer temperatures are orange and yellow. So wherever you see blue in this, in this picture on my camera, you're gonna see colder temperatures, and this is all related to uh, air leakage, especially along the top right here. So we step back a little bit, you can see this big yeah. blue square. Yeah. And I would suspect there may be a little a little bit of missing insulation. There. Okay. So up there along that, it looks like right along the seam there. Exactly. Yeah. So this is actually a pretty easy, um, inexpensive repair. Um, a homeowner can do this very easily. They could take uh, some clear paintable silicone caulk and run a bead from the top of the walls. It touches the slope ceiling and run it all, all the way across. And it'll actually fix a lot of this right, stuff right, right here. So this is the, one of the biggest leaks on this particular wall. 
So it'd be well worth doing to cost you, you know, maybe uh, five to ten dollars to do this wall. And again, the homeowner can do that. It's something very practical. Absolutely, you bet. So as we continue on, you can see where it gets a little darker. Yeah. Okay. So we've got more air leakage. In this sofa right here, you might feel a little cold chill in the back of your neck. It's not lack of insulation in the wall. It's air leaking along the right. top of the wall. Okay. So another fix for this is dropping the soffit outside, which on this particular house we're going to do, we're going to spray foam the top of this wall with closed cell spray foam and put the soffit back. So you can see the air leakage in the corner there. It's pretty pronounced. So as we come along the top of this gable end wall, you can actually see yeah. some leakage around this post. And then you've got some moisture dripping up there too. And that's going to be an indication of uh, condensation from air leakage. Okay. Boy, and that thermal imaging really, really shows up, doesn't it? It does a great job. It takes all the guesswork out of this. It also gives us the temperature here. This is about 68 degrees. So it's about a six degree difference from the air leakage to the inside temperature. So as we scan around toward the front into the kitchen, you can see where it gets, it gets quite a bit darker. This back wall yeah. right here is the coldest wall in the house. And it's gonna need the most work. Air seal the exterior wall top plates with closed cell spray foam by dropping the soffits on the outside of the house. And that's that's really amazing, Bob, as you take a look at that with your with the blower door test with your thermal imaging gun, mm -hmm. really shows where the leakages are. But also in terms of the homeowner, they can apply and you said some silicone, something they can do very very simply on their own. They can, and you can find all the stuff at your local hardware store. Well, oh, that's amazing to see, Bob. And I know you're going to head up to the attic and take a look. One of the things you're going to be interested in looking at the insulation up there. And speaking of insulation, there are rebates offered for insulation. Check with your local utility company for more information. Here's something you may not know. Thermal bridging is heat loss around uninsulated areas of home such as windows and doors, or where the wall meets the floor. Thermal bridging is just one of the problems a home energy audit may uncover. Here is something you may not know. The insulation in your attic can be inviting for curious critters. Squirrels can bite with 22,000 pounds of pressure, enough to chew through plastic and aluminum. If they get in your attic, they'll cause a mess of your insulation and make it easier for heat to escape. Hey, Bob. Hi, Megan. Heat said I'd find you up here. Before you show me, wow, there's a lot going on up here. There is. <laughs> um, explain why the attic is so important to a house. Well, a couple of component, key components in the attic um, is uh, moisture and air leakage and uh, potential ice stand problems. If you look along the bottom here, you can see there's a lot of moisture built up along the bottom. There uh, is. Of these insulation on either side. Over here, you can see a lot of pooling. And this is just constant dripping over the last umpteen years. In the far left corner, you can actually see where there might be a little bit of roof damage, uh, which should be probably repaired. Now, these puddles over here, do you think that's from a direct leak or is that condensation? Most likely from condensation because um, condensation is caused by warm indoor air collecting on the coldest part of the house. In this case, either side of the um, insulation and it's going to run down the wrappers and trip along the edge. All right, tell us about this insulation up here. It looks like it's pretty damaged. It is, it's pretty damaged um, and surprisingly it's not very old. Um, this is probably less than 10 years old on a house that was built in the 70s. So um, one of the problems that I see when they installed it is they, is they use the incorrect size. So the rafter depth here is actually six inches and this is probably three or three and a half inch fiberglass bat, which is the incorrect size. So we're going to remove all the fiberglass insulation, uh, re-inspect it for uh, damage, and then uh, re-insulate it. Okay. Any other piping or anything else you see? Um, yeah, there's a, a pipe right here, which is the exhaust uh, vent for the bathroom fan. Um, so that'll need to be replaced with insulated material. Okay. You had mentioned um, what you thought might be ice dam damage over there. An ice dam is when the heated air of a home leaks into the attic and warms the roof, causing snow to melt in the winter. The water flows down the roof and then freezes at the edge, forcing other melted water behind it to leak into the roof and cause damage. The homeowners had said that they had ice dams in the past. Is that what that's from? You know, um, if I had a guess, I would say it's, uh, it, it, it's probably ice dam related, or I would suspect it, just on based on where it's located. It's right near an outside wall, so I, I would definitely think that it, 
could be ice dam related. All right. Let's go see what we find out on the other side of the Let's attic. Let's go. Okay, Bob, we're in the other half of the attic. First, explain why this house has two separate attics. Well, originally when the house was built, the, the exterior wall actually ended right here. And then the space behind us, the attic we were just in, is actually a room addition that was added. Oftentimes we get calls from additions with ice tank problems, and it's typically because uh, sometimes the contractors aren't able to air seal the space between the addition and the original house. So we would have to take a look at that um, okay. to see if there's any issues there. So this is finished on this side. Correct. Is there the same or similar insulation up here? Per perceivably, yes, but we won't know unless we take a piece out and inspect it. Right, and you won't know if it's damaged to the extent that insulation Correct. is as well. Mm -hmm. All right. So what's going on up here? What do you see? Um, I see a normal uh, attic that's been around since the late 70s, and um, I don't see anything totally unusual except for the soil stack. This has been dripping on the floor. You can see some moisture staining right here. So um, again, we, we would have to expose some of the roofing material, air seal this, and that would take care of all this piece right here. Okay. And after you get that taken care of, um, now as far as the investigation goes, where are we going? We're headed to the crawl space. Oh, we're not headed to the crawl space. <laughs> <laughs> That's going to be a place we're going to send Pete. Okay. I think he'd like to go there. Sure. So, Bob, I know this is normally when you're inspecting the basement of a house, but this home doesn't have a basement. Correct, Pete. This actually has a crawl space, and this particular crawl space is heated. So we're really concerned about air infiltration and air exfiltration. So we want to be able to keep the air inside the crawl space inside and not outside and vice versa. And again, that really comes into play in terms of when you're thinking about heat loss for a home here. Correct, it does. And as, as I look at this, Bob, we're going down in this hole here. I mean, it's, it's, it's a very confined space, but it does run the length of the, of the home. It runs the entire length of the home underneath. It's probably three to four feet deep, so not a lot of space down there. So we're going to have some fun today. Okay. Well, I'm glad you think that. Let's, <laughs> let's check it out. Okay. Bob, you weren't kidding. This is a bit of a confined space as we're down in the crawl space. So when you're down here, what are you looking for? We're looking primarily um, evidence of air infiltration, rodents, moisture related problems, mainly related to odor. Okay. It looks like, uh, I mean, some insulation and some issues uh, as I look up here towards the, uh, uh, the side. Yeah, so up here along the top of this wall, we have a, um, an area called the sill box, and it runs around the entire perimeter of the house all the way around. And you can see there's been some rodents in here. Right behind you here, there's a piece of fiberglass insulation hanging with a bunch of holes in it. So the insulation that's down here has just been decimated by rodents. Also looking here, the, the vapor barrier on, 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 the, on the ground here. Looks like it uh, has seen better days. It has. So in order for a proper uh, vapor barrier to work, it would need to be encapsulated 100%. That means laid out up to the sides of the wall, air sealed all the way around. And that helps keep some of the moisture down and some of the rodents out of the crawl space. Moisture in the crawl space, you want to keep below 60% at all costs. I'm more concerned about it in the summer months because it can contribute to moisture related problems, mold and such. All right, so as you look at this, I mean, definitely some improvements you can make for the, for the homeowner here in terms of tightening this up and, and reducing that heat loss. Absolutely. As you look across here. Yep, and then additionally, the other side of this wall here is the addition. There's no vapor barrier in there at all. There's no insulation on the crawl space walls. If you look over here to the right, you can see all this ductwork hanging. This would all actually need to be tightened up and sealed. This is something that we'd recommend also. It looks like there's a lot that you can do. This is going to account for probably 25% of the total air leakage in the house. That's amazing. Yeah. That's amazing. And again, it can be corrected and can be fixed. Correct. Well, Bob, it is, I mean, we're a little cramped down here. It's, it's fascinating though, but one of those things that a homeowner can improve. I've, I've seen enough. I'm ready to get out of here. I'm ready to get out of here too. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> Here's something you may not know. The optimum rate of air exchange in a home is about every three hours. A house that is classified as very leaky could exchange air every 30 minutes or less, which is why a furnace or air conditioner has to work harder to keep up. Here is something you may not know. A thermal imaging camera is a great benefit when searching how energy escapes your home. The camera can see air leaks around windows and doors, find missing insulation and walls, and check ductwork for leaks. Well, that was quite the investigation. We literally went from top to bottom inside this house. Bob, what did we end up finding out here? Well, we found some air leakage um, issues in the house, which we're going to repair, um, some missing insulation, which is um, something we'll definitely address. 
at the crawl space. Um, it's a little tore up. We'll need to make some modifications down there to clean all that up and make it more moisture resistant and rodent resistant. Uh, the water heater we checked for backdrafting, um, worst case, and it did pass. So that's, that's fine. Every audit that we do, we always check the furnace and the water heater for backdrafting. So in this situation, what are some things that the homeowners can do um, to save energy? Great question. Uh, lots of things you can do around the house. Probably one of the most inexpensive, easiest thing to do is air sealing with caulk, either fire rated or just paintable caulk. You can get it at your local hardware store or home improvement center, and you can just a couple of tubes of caulk will do a great job. You know, if the homeowner follows your outline in terms of the assessment, energy savings, what expectations uh, along that? Um, it varies from house to house, but I would say in this particular house, we're looking between 15 and 20 percent. That's significant. It is. Now, houses settle over time, so is this something um, that should be done every year? I would say no, uh, depending on the age of the house, if this house has been here for some time, so I would say no. Thank you so much, Bob. This has Thanks really been fun helping you out with your energy investigation. Thank you. Appreciate it. This was really a thorough search for air leaks and energy loss. The blower door is a neat tool to easily find those leaks. And the search not only found air leaks, it also helped uncover the problem with ice dams. If you have ice dams, then you're losing heated air into your attic. A little more insulation might melt those problems away. And searching under the house was an experience I won't forget. Rodent and small animals do their part to make it harder for your home to save energy. And check with your local utility company to see if they offer a home energy audit. If they do, take them up on it. It'll help make your house a powerhouse. Megan's Wardrobe, provided by Dress Barn.